holds together, the magnetic field and the electrical field entrain and, and, and look like each other when we measure that. And it gives us very, um, what's interesting is that those measurements away from the body give us more detailed information than those that are on the skin and on the body. More information out here than there is on us and in us. Okay. Um, this, this shielded room, you know, probably most of you know, I mean, um, when we start looking at how do we get rid of the EMFs, how do we block out all the stuff that, that affects us, you know, we can get in, into these rooms and what happens to that, you know, the brain waves change, the heart rate, very much, everything changes when we block ourselves out into these kinds of chambers. And it kind of resets us. It resets things. And so someday, maybe there's some therapy like this. And I will tell you that the Russians now have a blanket that they wrap patients in, and it's made out of different wires, and it supposedly blocks out as much EMF as you can get without being in a Faraday cage, but it blocks it out, and I have one, and when we have an anxious patient or somebody coming in that's afraid of a procedure or they're in the psychotic state, we say, go lay in the blanket, wrap them in the blanket, let them stay there for a while, by the time I come in, I'm, they're, they're in good shape. Now, placebo, I don't know, but placebo's real. <laughs> but I've had patients that we've done other things with and not had that kind of effect. So just by blocking out all the noise makes a profound effect. And in sleep studies, it'd be interesting to see what would happen there. Okay. The heart is the strongest electrical generator in the body. There's a fit law in physics called Ampere's Law. Anytime you have a closed system and you have fluid in it, when it, when it circulates, it has to create an electromagnetic field, period. It's a law of physics. Our circulatory system, we are a closed system. We flow and we create a field. These are just laws of physics to document. We know we can measure the field, but we also know why it's happening, just from a physics standpoint. Okay. Heart rate variability. Um, you guys are familiar with that a little bit, right? It's the best predictor of our post MI morbidity that we've got still. And, but we use it in, um, in physical medicine and use it with athletes to see where are they on their, on their um, health line. So the more variability, the more healthy they are. You put somebody on a beta blocker, it does what it's supposed to do, keeps that heart in a, in a, in a regulated pattern, but their overall health goes down. How do they feel? How do they function? Not well. We want some variability, and that's called adaptation of the body. EMF, stress, all the things that come are, we need to be able to adapt and change. When we take that ability away from a patient, we try to regulate it, the overall health of the organism tends to go down. Cortical reorganization. We know that the cortex of uh, children or people who have studied music is more highly developed, better gyri. That's been documented and studied just because they developed that brain a little bit better. We also know that intense practices of um, electromagnetic or even therapies of Reiki and so forth, they're starting to document the changes. Cortical reorganization by these kinds of therapies. Okay. Keep up. This the emotions and field of the heart. That's heart math is a good place if you're not familiar with heart rate variability. We actually had a Google presentation heart. on heart math. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So they're doing some studies. You know, they're trying to do some things to document what they're talking about in the heart rate variability. They've taken that technology, which was, was it Duke or Princeton? I can't remember. It's one of the back east major, Princeton, I think. The, the doctor who developed heart rate variability, I think, believe was at Princeton. Yeah. It actually came from Russia. Russia, originally, well, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In this country, we got credit for, I think it was Princeton the first time he did a study here. But the Russians are, and have been, I don't know where they are now. They may be floundering a little bit, but for a while, they are a bit ahead of us. All right. <clears throat> this is <clears throat> this was in the American Journal of Cardiology, 1995. So I put that down there because I think that's interesting. Even then, they were talking about this is what frustration looks like, and this is what appreciation looks mm -hmm. like, and that has to do with um, coherent frequencies. When our frequencies, when we're in love and appreciation, and we're feeling that, the frequencies that we can measure from the heart is coherent. But the minute we get upset, we become incoherent, those frequencies. And that makes 
causes damage in our body and we don't function as well. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. thank you for announcing my question. <laughs> <laughs> About cell phones? Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, what is that? That's, that's not an EKG, right? That, that, that looks... That is, that is, it's, it's similar to EKG, it's a heart rate variability with the uh, blood pressure. So it is, we can measure those frequencies. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm having trouble. Okay. Yeah, thank right, you, Michael. All right. All right. <laughs> sorry, would you say that one more time? It, it, this is heart rate. This is heart rate and then the frequency. So it is an EKG with this. The EKG is showing us patterns. The EKG is going to give us a little bit different. But this is the frequencies that if you put a, um, a lost, you know, the little, the, the, the counter that will, you know, go on the paper just like an EKG, we will see it when you go to a finite to get it into smaller pieces like this instead of the large, are we getting T waves, ST waves, yeah, and all yeah. that. This is what we're looking at, and they know, and there's lots of studies that have been done on this. This is well documented. That, that those different emotions cause, and heart math has done some of this as well, um, coherent frequency produced by the heart um, as opposed to incoherent. And that's why cold laser and others are all about coherent. They found that if, they, if we have a coherent red light laser, that works better than an incoherent. So, yeah. I added up the number of peaks in the first 60 seconds. Right. Is that heart beating seven times per minute? I don't think those are beats per peak here. I think it's this is more frequency. Rate. I know it, and I, I don't like the way that they did their graph. If you, mm -hmm. I got this with the permission from, um, from that book, Oshman's book, and it's explained more in detail there of why they named that that way on their axes. And that's more in detail. Seven it's been so long since I've read it. Seven no. beats per minute is pretty slow. Right, but well, if we were in an appreciation, <laughs> you would expect it to be low. But no, it's not. That does not correlate to it. So, re and I'll go back and look at that, and you can look at that as well. I remember it had the same question, and I got it answered when I read it. And I don't it's, know. It's the. No. It, it, it is what it it's says. The it's the. It's the. The graph is graphing the frequency, and so a peak represents not a beat but it's, it's a hertz. higher frequency it's of hertz. beats. So, oh, so it's, hertz. That's it's graphing yes. variability in the heart rate. It's not it's not showing beats of the heart, right. it's showing variations in the rate of the heartbeat. So it's a lot from a heart standpoint. Down, yeah. Up, yeah. yeah, exactly. Right. Speed up, slow down. It's still really misleading though. It is. I don't like the way because I had the same like question. Because it would be about Exactly. I had the. I had the. I think they. The way that they labeled that left axis, I think, is not not explanatory. And I think this was, and it was well enough research that they did print it in the American Journal of Cardiology. So I think I don't like the way they labeled the graph. Obviously, it's confusing. Like but, though, the, but the takeaway yeah. point, which is interesting about this stuff, is that you see that the increase and the decrease in the speed of the heartbeat yeah. is consistent across time. Right. So you're not getting this big speed up and then more speed up and more speed up and then this big drop in. So right. Of the, that's, of, where they that's right. Of, of the heart saying, whoa, whoa, I've gone too fast, I'm upset, I need to slow back down again. You know, uh, the more coherent. And there's some other, I think I've got some other slides coming up in a minute that may have a little bit of red graphing on this kind of work. Um, here, frequency, hertz, and amplitude. So that's a little easier to, to get your head wrapped around that, right? Um, so coherent, love, and anger or frustration. 